and goodness. How is everybody doing today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Keller Williams Mountains to Sound, Keller Williams Puget Sound, and the Thrive Forward community. We're so happy to see you today on an incredibly gorgeous, gorgeous Monday. Um, and so we want to thank all of you guys who did decide to forego just for an hour the beautiful sunshine uh, so you could be joining us today. We really have a fantastic meeting planned for you today. Today is all about statistics statistics and of course our very favorite favorite statistician um, Mr. Dennis Ranch will be here with Bill Allison they will be talking all about uh, numbers which right now is so incredibly important in our business isn't it all right so let's hop right in we always love to have our very favorite um, designated broker Mr. John Hansen so John come on in and say hi how you doing my friend doing great thanks how are you i am fantastic okay so what are we talking about today john well i wanted to go over buyer agency agreement a little bit uh, before i do so i just wanted to make a mention to everybody to please uh, pay attention to the updates on COVID 19 in your mls 
um, your MLS is, is keeping you posted on those and they um, are saying that, that if your client will not wear a mask in your, you know, with you or in the house where they're going into, you may not serve them. So um, please make sure that both you and your client are wearing masks. Um, if you have a bunch of masks, you might bring an extra one for your client in case they don't have one, that kind of thing. Um, and, and in the office, they should not have appointments of more than a half hour is also the guideline that's given to us. Right. Okay, so uh, buyer agency agreement. So um, one of the exciting things I'm seeing are so many brokers now using the buyer agency agreement. The the unfortunate thing I'm seeing is that is that about um, approximately a hundred percent are not doing it right. So I just wanted to um, go over the couple of issues that would make everybody do it just exactly right. If if you'll give me the the, the moment here. So on the form 41A, which is a buyer agency agreement. Uh, the form that you should be using is the revision from 1019. Now I understand that just three months before this form came out, there was another revision of this form dated 719. That's the one that you don't want to use. Okay, to use an outdated form is a huge no no in the legal community. So do not, please do not use that outdated form. That's the biggest mistake I see people making is not using the new version. So that might simply be that you've got the old version in your browser, right? So, so you need to clear your browser, or it might be that you've made a bunch of photocopies of the outdated form. So you got to toss them all in recycling, of course, and get your new ones printed out because it is the form 41A revised 1019. And so when you are representing a buyer, um, yes, it's true that the likelihood of that buyer paying you the commission is very small, if not minuscule. Um, the seller almost always will pay the commission. But there's some technicalities that, um, that need to be taken care of correctly in order for that to happen. So on your um, paragraph four for compensation and scope of agency. And this used to be paragraph eight in the form that was three months outdated. Um, so in that, in that compensation paragraph, that is where you will put in a number only. For example, if I was going to want to get 3% commission, on my side of the transaction, on my buyer side of the transaction, I'm going to put in. I'm going to check that box and put in the number three there, right? And that's it. Period. So adding any wording, any more wording to anything, will only invalidate your contract. That's all it will do is invalidate your contract. As you know. For a contract to be valid, there has to be uh, compensation brought in by each side. And so uh, the, the compensation that I'm bringing in as the agent, as the brokers, I'm going to be bringing in my, uh, my, my services to find the property, to show the property, to write the contract. Uh, I guess they call that consideration, right? Consideration. And that's what I'm bringing in as consideration. The other side also has to bring in consideration or it's not a valid contract. Now, if they are not bringing in 3% or the promise to bring in 3%, they can't enter into a con I can't enter into a contract with them. So I can't put in a bunch of wording saying that, you know, which is gonna contradict what's already in paragraph A. So in this revised, version if you'll read that paragraph a it is really well written the the attorneys who wrote this did so with the feedback and input of 
many brokers. So they, so this is written in a way that should be really clear now to both you and your clients um, that um, if they're going to go through the MLS, they're going to be able to have the seller likely pay a commission, right? Now there's some circumstances. Now that says that in there that the the buyer uh, that there will be it's the very end of line 25 that says no compensation is due to firm from buyer. Okay, so you can direct their eyes to that if they're panicked seeing that the buyer's got to pay this compensation. Okay, that is fixed in paragraph A, not fixed, but it's clarified that as long as they go through the MLS, we're going to be good. Okay, so, so then the problem comes in what if what if they're uh, what if, what if they're not going to go through the MLS where they find something on their own what if it's a FISBO and those kind of things so the next two paragraphs B and C address those issues as to whether it's going to be exclusive meaning doesn't matter whether they find it or how you know you're going to get that commission and the paragraph C is for non-exclusive which means um, if they find it themselves or anything, you know, and you didn't direct them to, then they don't have to pay you, pay you that 3% or ensure that you're getting paid that 3% by the seller. Okay, so I just, I wanted to go over that just to make sure there was not a misunderstanding because of so many, and I, and I do appreciate so many are using the buyer agency agreement now and putting it into the um, consultation part of the, uh, of the command uh, command filing system, but I just want to make sure that it's in a way that it's going to have some sort of effect because it has no effect if you're writing other wording in there. What are you seeing for wording, John? Uh, boy, I'm seeing everything. I, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it say to be paid by seller, um, seller to pay. Um, um, buyer will only pay if seller won't, you know, different things like that. So really the, the paragraph A is, is the beautifully written explanation. Outstanding. Well, thank you, John, so much for your elucidation. That's always important. And it, I think the most important thing is it's uh, always making sure that we're using the most recent forms at all times. So, yes, and, yes, and, and Cole, this, this tool is such a powerful, powerful tool to be able to have this buyer agency agreement. There's, there's so many things that will result positively or negatively from the use or non-use of the form. So it's so important to be using it with all buyers and then um, just using it the right way. Correct. Makes total sense. All right. Well, thank you so much, John, for joining us and bringing all that wonderful information to light. We so appreciate you, my friend. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a great day. Okay. So we have some really exciting news um, from uh, our wonderful um, culture community from KWMTS, from, from Mountains to Sound. And let me invite Jennifer Thompson and Lindsay Dwyer in. Hey, ladies, how are you today? Good. Okay. Good. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen because we have something fun coming up, don't we, Jennifer? We do indeed. Yes. Tell us all about it. So uh, we had grand plans for our fall fundraiser. And because we are all still practicing a lot of social distancing, uh, we decided that we needed to go back to the drawing board. And uh, so we came up, not came up with, we were inspired to do a fall uh, run for fun to benefit Vine Maple Place and KW Cares. So it's going to be a virtual race, which is really cool. Um, I'm a racer, as evidenced by, I don't know if you can see these, because I can't see myself, but I have a little collection of these. Okay. And uh, this is the bling from the races. And a lot of races have gone to being virtual. And so people are paying um, various amounts of money to get a t-shirt, a race bib, a finisher medal, and um, we were, so we're working on our race package. Uh, so it's going to be uh, all inclusive for kids, for families, for clients. What a great way to reach out to your clients and say, hey, let's do a virtual race together. We're gonna have um, hashtags so you can put it on social media. We'll fill you in on all of that stuff as it comes together. 
the distances are going to be one mile, uh, 5K, a 10K, and then a half marathon. Wow. And because it's virtual, that. you can do it at your own pace. If it's a one mile, maybe you could do that one day because that shouldn't take long. Um, but it would be fun to get your kids, the teachers, maybe some brokers that you have or your referral par partners with across the U.S., um, get them engaged. So we are looking right now um, at a $40 uh, uh, par uh, registration fee, and we're fine-tuning that to make sure what that includes. So again, it's a great opportunity to uh, have engagement, respect the social distancing, and have a great experience of getting out. And Lindsay can go into all the fabulous details about the technical side, because she's amazing. So, Lindsay. So for um, actually setting it up, we'll be using a service called rallyup.com, which kind of handles everything for us, it makes it super easy. It'll take a little bit of time to get set up to make sure that the um, whole payment processing will go smoothly. Uh, so once that is ready, we will let all of you know. Um, all of the pledges will be tracked online, so no one has to be sitting there thinking about like, oh, how many miles did this person run? That will all be online. Um, you can sign up as a participant or as a runner, um, or you can uh, pledge to support a runner, which uh, is another, if someone doesn't want to actually do the running themselves. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about for Rally Up is team fundraising. So for you uh, teams out there, uh, you can create your own landing page um, so that when someone you want to send someone to uh, the race sign up or to pledge donations, you can go straight to a, let's say, the results team page. Um, so everyone gets funneled to your branding, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's really easy to use. I've used it in the past for a raffle. Um, and you can also do mobile giving, text to give, and there's live video integration. There's all this other stuff, and it's just all there for us. So we don't have to spend time uh, reinventing the wheel. Fantastic, Lindsay. I'm so excited about this. So um, we are saying you've got a race window. Am I right, guys? It's between September 12th and September 19th. So it's a full uh, eight days, really, there that we can take advantage of that. Is that correct? Yes, because it's virtual, you can do it at any time. Uh, but to really have engagement and involvement, how fun would it be to say, hey, Susie Chapstick in New York, let's run on September 12th together and FaceTime and upload your video. So more yeah. of a race week, if you will, but yes, um, virtual so you can do it whenever you feel like it, but we want to focus on that week. Fantastic. Well, get your friends together, get your family together, get your database together. This is such an amazing cause. So Jennifer, how much are we um, going to raise for uh, KW Cares and for, um, and for Vine Maple Place? Uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. I love thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars. Oh, no limit then. That's okay. Guys. No limit. We're breaking through the ceiling. Breaking through the ceiling. Okay, fantastic. Well, I tell you what, I cannot wait to get my shoes on, and uh, I'm even going to get my husband out there with me if I can. It'll be fantastic. Um, but all of you racers, runners, walkers, please join us. This is such an amazing cause. You're going to see a lot of details on our Facebook pages. I know Lindsay's going to be keeping us totally up to date on how we can really um, totally expand on all of our virtual media. Uh, and our social media on this so cannot wait for that ladies thank you so much we so appreciate you and and all the community's hard work thank you all right yeah. see you later bye okay so we have got somebody else coming on from culture and that is miss jackie parker jackie come on in and say hi hello how are you doing lady i'm doing well how are you I am doing great. We have something really fun coming up next week that you're going to tell us about, right? Of course, yeah. All right, we've got the KW Summer Jams, and so we will have Boss, Mama, uh, Boss Mama's Kitchen Food Truck, if you guys haven't checked them out. Uh, amazing, bring an appetite for sure. Um, and we will also have beautiful music from Kurt Lindsay. This is a good friend of Carmen's and also a local artist, a singer songwriter. Um, we'll post some videos of his his work on our Facebook pages, but you guys are in for a show if, if you come and, and check out uh, his performance. We're, we're really excited to have him. 
Oh my gosh, this sounds like so much fun. I hear that the parking lots over at, at um, Federal Way are just way too much fun when you guys have the food truck there. <laughs> I yeah, love we, it. we're having a good time. Bring your camping chairs. We will social distance. Everyone can stay near their own cars and your masks. Uh, but we, we'd love to see you guys in person. Of course, we get to see you here on the camera, but uh, there's, there's nothing like being in, in front of someone. So oh, bring your masks, so bring your chairs, so bring your appetite. And Cole, I know you said you put your shoes on for running. Bring your dancing shoes. We'll be grooving. I love it. That sounds perfect. Okay. We're all going to do the social distance hug, right, Jackie? That's how we're going to do it. Okay. Um, I think Carmen might have her hazmat suit on i'm not sure <laughs> oh if we get real hugs from Carmen, i love that she has to have those it's like that. Part I just of her. Threw that out there so we'll see uh, okay okay carmen this is a challenge out to you you gotta wear your hazmat suit that's all we're <laughs> say. we need hugs that's it well jackie yeah. thank you so much for uh joining us today and telling us all about the wonderful things happening next week we sure appreciate it have a good day everyone Wonderful. Okay, guys. So what I wanted to do um, today also is I want to share with you um, um, some cultural things, but probably one of the prime cultural things is our, um, our mission statement. And so I wanted to share that with you for just a second. So our Keller and Williams mission statement is to create careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. And if you think in terms of um, coming into real estate, it's the real full path of a real estate career. It starts off with to have a career worth having. Most people have other jobs that they've worked for, maybe school that they've gone to before going into real estate. So they're looking for a career. As they learn more, as they gain more wisdom, as they gain more skill set, then it starts becoming a business worth owning. That's so wonderful. We can get to that point. And I think the point that all of us are looking for is to create a life worth living. What's a life worth living for you? And then when you have that life worth living, what is that experience worth giving to your family, to your friends, to charities? What does that experience look like for you? And of course, at the end of the day, what's the legacy that you want to leave? I think it's so important that we understand the meaning of our mission statement and also about creating a life worth living. So I love this quote from Jim Rohn, and it says, when enough is enough, oh, let me get passionate about that. When enough is enough meets massive action, then your life will change. So my question to you is, are you willing not to live your best life? Are you willing not to live your best life? Because here's what I've been kind of noticing and understanding as well as, as some of our ALC and some of our, um, our executive leadership team. We're getting a little fatigued right now, gang we're starting to kind of fall back into this space of, um, I'm not gonna say complacency for everyone. I don't necessarily wanna say that, but I do wanna say that fatigue might be setting in just a little bit. That you might feel the doldrums coming on because of the shutdown. I want you guys to, to take a moment and lean in a little bit, lean into what is possible for you right now. And if we can take a look at some of the things that we want to talk about, right? Do you have a goal? Your goal is important. Revisit that goal, revisit that big why. Then having a goal, you've got to have a plan for it. What is that plan? When you have that plan, then take action, massive action, as Jim Rohn was saying. And when we're taking massive action, we start seeing massive results. Have we forgotten about all these things? We had a really interesting growth group uh, this morning where we started talking about what will it take to have an absolutely successful August. And things, some things we discovered was that everybody was kind of going small and into themselves and not reaching out. So I want you to understand you're not alone. Remember, here at Keller Williams, we share, we look outwards, we leverage, we find the places where we can find true 
partnership with people. So here's some questions that I really think that you can ask right now. The first question, who can I reach out to who can help me? Who can I reach out to who can help me? Is it someone in my market center? Is it the ALC? Is it the executive leadership team? Is it a Facebook group um, from KWRI? Is it the Pivot Shift Ahead group? Who could you reach out to to help? The next thing is who is doing this at a high level? Go on to any of those places and simply ask the question, who is doing what I want to do at a high level? The next question is where can I look to find the answers? Sometimes you don't know what you don't know, so ask around. Ask, is there anywhere I can figure this out? Who has ideas? Remember, we are all better when we're sharing ideas. Team, together everyone um, um, succeeds. The next one is where did I have success in the past and am I doing those things? Have I lost track of the things that really used to make sense? And then finally, what are my options? Ask, what are my options in this particular point? You have options. There are people around you. There are places to go. Remember, you're not alone. You don't have to go small. All you have to do is lean in and find the people to support you. And by the way, you're allowed to feel alone. How about that? You're allowed to feel um, afraid. You, by the way, you're allowed to feel like you've got everything rocking and rolling too. There's nothing wrong with that. What we want to make sure is that wherever that emotion is that pushes you forward, you stay there. I call that the sassy walk. Love the sassy walk. Okay. Or for guys, it's the woohoo swagger. <laughs> and if you are feeling not so that, if you're feeling like everybody around you is succeeding, but you're not, it's okay. You, but you're not alone. Reach out, reach out to your executive leadership team, reach out to your ALC, reach out to anybody in your market center. People are always here to help. All right. I really hope you guys take that to heart. Now, one of the biggest places that starts is with your education. So let's talk about what is coming up. We are so excited about a new program. So I want to tell you about this. It's called the 12 Weeks to Mastery for Systems, Tools, and Models of the MREA. Here's what's so cool about this, guys. <clears throat> so we've been developing an onboarding program for existing agents who come and join our market centers for both our um, Federal Way Office and our Puget Sound Office. Well, what we decided to do is we realized there's a quite a few agents out there who have not um, been able to know or even learn from what are all the systems, tools, and models of the MREA. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a special sitting. This is 12 weeks on Wednesdays at 730 in the morning. You'll join us for 12 weeks to mastery. Anybody who is with Keller Williams Mountain Sound and Keller Williams Puget Sound can join in on 12 Weeks to Mastery um, for the whole program and really deep dive into what are all of the models. We start at the very, very beginning with the six personal perspectives and they work you all the way through the four foundational models, the economic model, the lead generation model, the budget model, and the organizational model. And we read all the way through the MREA. So we would love to have you join us for that. All right. Very simple. If you will do me a favor and I want you to email me at Cole Finley, that's K-O-L-E-F-I-N-L-E-Y at KW.com and let me know that you would like to join in. We'd love to have you. Our only um, um, thing that we ask you to do is stick with it for 12 weeks. I know after 12 weeks, you should be really, really entrenched in it. And that's our goal is to make sure that you are all in that. So please do um, join us for that. All right. Also coming oh. up. Yeah. Sorry. Quick question. Will these yeah. be recorded? Will these sessions be recorded? Yes, they will be recorded. Okay. Yes, they will. Thanks for that question, Dennis. I sure appreciate that. Are there any other questions? I see a couple things in the chat. Is there any other questions uh, about that? think we gotcha. Alrighty then. So uh, do us a favor and do that. Okay. Now, next thing I want to show you is on KW Connect, 
when you simply go to kwconnect.com, uh, you will find the Pivot Shift Ahead page. On the Pivot Shift Ahead page, you're going to see all of the training that's coming up this week, as well all as well as all of the on-demand training that's there. So first of all, this is what's coming up this week. Of course, Monday has already passed. So we'll go on to Tuesday. We have um, opportunities and command through Q and A. That should be um, really walk through and Q and A. By the way, that should be really fantastic for you. So that is tomorrow at 10 a.m. our time, uh, and then at noon, it's Build Your Agent to Agent Referral Network. I got to tell you guys, there is a lot of really great money to be had inside a referral-based system through other agents inside Keller Williams. So I strongly urge you to go on that. Then we over go into Wednesday and we have at 10 a.m. Utilize YouTube to ramp up your lead generation. YouTube, oh, I love it. Let's do more technology. I'm a big fan of YouTube. This is a great way for you to build your business. I would strongly encourage you to go into that one. And then also on Wednesday at 12 p.m., we have explained forbearance to your clients. So we are learning all about the financial side of things and forbearance, very important. Let's go to Thursday. We have 10 a.m. getting started with your agent site. How many of you do not have your agent site put together yet? That's what you absolutely want to do is get on there and figure out some more about that on that class. And then at 12 noon, you've got command your contacts with PySync. PySync is how we, we merge all of your different platforms for, um, for contacts and gets those all together. And then finally on Friday, navigate the new luxury market. How many of you are wanting to get into luxury? Great class for you at 10 a.m. And then finally, Lifeline with Gary Keller. I got to tell you, these are fantastic um, uh, webinars with Gary. By the way, if you want to see all of the ones that he's previously done, simply go on that Pivot um, Shift Ahead page and you're going to see it. Matter of fact, this is really what you're looking at. This is the bottom of the page and you'll see a Life with Gary Keller right here. Um, by the way, this morning he had an incredible um, uh, life uh, live stream that I thought was fantastic and it really was all about um, social inclusion. And I would strongly uh, urge every one of you guys to go and check out uh, any of these videos. They're really fantastic. But this is some of your best places for education. Lean into education right now. Let it ground you into your best August ever. All right, well, how can we then get some of our best August ever? Well, the way we do that is through Bold Pivot. Yes, 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 you know that program that is normally seven weeks and $799. It is only $99 right now. And I got to tell you, they, we first did this in May and it was really um, uh, a, a wonderful learning experience on taking it from physical to digital. And they learned so much during May that even in, in uh, August now, it should be really fantastic. But here are some things to understand. By the way, this starts on August 4th. That is available for you. And by the way, um, we will um, send out the link on our Facebook pages so you guys can get on it. But here's some data that you may not know about for attendees versus non-attendees. Um, bold Pivot attendees average 14% more listings taken than those who did not attend. There was 9% more contracts written than those who did not attend. Now, this is getting really interesting. 46% more contacts created. We all know that when you're creating contacts, you are creating that database that really starts your business engine. Then we have 39% more opportunities created. And then we have 79% more smart plans created. By the way, one of the best smart plans you can use is the monthly neighborhood nurture. I hope all you guys are using that right now. And then finally, love this, 133% more campaigns created. Oh my gosh, campaigns. And here's what we're learning, guys. It's, it's costing roughly a dollar nine cents, a dollar and nine cents per lead when you're using campaigns for social media. That's incredible. So let's say that you got 10 leads that cost you what, uh, $10 and 90 cents. And of those 10 leads, you, you closed one transaction out of 10 leads. And that transaction was $10,000. 
So roughly, could it be that you did a spend for $10.90 and got $10,000 back? Very possible, right? So lean into your technology. It is going great. By the way, the very best um, place to go and find out the best practices for what's going on is Command Your Conversion a group on Facebook. Make sure you're going there and look at it every single day. It's a fantastic place to get tons of ideas on all of our KW technology. By the way, anytime you see Nick Baldwin on there, just watch his videos. The man is magic. He's gold. Or Jason Abrams, both fantastic. All right, and another thing that we have got coming up in September. Okay, this is going to be really fascinating. We have Mega Camp coming up, and that's going to be September 15th through 17th, and it's going to be virtual. All right, so I'm so excited because your leadership teams have, have started talking about how do we make this the most fun and exciting time that we can put together in a physically based or digitally based, physically enhanced enhancing it with physical space. So stay tuned for all the fun that we're going to be having on that. I think it's going to be a great time for us all. Okay, lots of stuff for you to digest there as far as all the learning goes. Um, so let's go ahead and enhance that learning even more and even better with our main attraction today. Let's welcome in Mr. Bill Allison and Mr. Dennis Ranch. Come on in, guys. Well, thank you for having us in. And, and of course, I am not the main attraction. Mr. Dennis Ranch is the main attraction. So we got to start searching a little harder for main attractions if I'm the main attraction. <laughs> so it's all good. You know, listen, and here's the thing. Many people don't realize this, um, but on the entire staff, right, between both offices, really and truly, it is just, it is Brian, Pham, and myself, right, and Dennis, and so it's just the three of us as as males, and the rest are females. And so I crave my time with you, Dennis. So I'm like, you know, I'll search you out all day long and be like, just I need some guy time. So I appreciate it, man. Hey, um, today we're going to be sitting here and we're going to be talking a little bit about numbers. And there is nothing, as I get to know Dennis, there is nothing more except for your family. I think that you love besides numbers, right? And numbers are an important thing for everything that we do. But before we get to numbers, speaking of family, um, I do believe that there is one thing um, that maybe you want to tell people about, about your family. Um, and let's see if I can share this screen right here. Um, I would love to do this right here. Can you tell us who this is? This is Paxton, Paxton John Ranch. Paxton John Ranch. So yep. this is your second grandson, right? Chris's so son. Just a big congratulations out to Chris and Olivia and to you guys and everyone else. So Thank you. Um, we wanted to show Paxton on there so that everybody could see him. And so, yeah. So again, congratulations on that, Dennis. But Thank you. let's get into uh, really and truly kind of numbers, right? We tell agents all the time. I mean, know your numbers, right? What's the difference really and truly between an agent that knows their numbers and an agent that doesn't know their numbers? The agent that knows their numbers actually probably more than likely has a P&L and has an actual business that they're running. Um, okay. You'd be surprised. I would guess that it's probably 10% actually have a profit and loss statement. Yeah, so in 10% of just agents in general or agents in our offices? Agents in general. Agents in general. So really truly 10% then are, are really owning a business, which is part of well, our mission statement, right? So I would say that uh, unless they have a profit and loss statement, they have no idea you know, where they're spending their money, are the percentages the correct percentages of what they should be according to MREA, um, are they actually netting what they think they're netting? My yeah. guess is they're probably not. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, how many times do we hear the story, right? Of like, hey, I made $100,000 last year and I don't know where it went, right? I, I, I don't know where it is. And so we hear that a lot. And that's the people that are really, truly, if we're honest, they're winging it, right? And so. Yeah. Which, what, by the way, that's how I did it the first seven years, in, or at least seven years in the business. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think it's the way that a lot of us have, have done it. And it's when, we, it's when we take ownership, right? When we take accountability, that's when we really, truly start to change who we are. And we start to take control of our business. 
and uh, and yeah, it's important. So when we talk to agents about numbers, and it starts with their P and L, starts with their budget, everything else. What numbers? What numbers do we encourage agents to look at, really and truly? So there's two there's two separate areas that you look at. One is cost of sale. Okay. And we all know we all know that our that when you pay on a split, you have company dollar, which is cost of sale. Um, we have royalty, which is cost of sale. It's whatever gets taken out at closing is a cost of sale. Okay. So if it's taken out at closing and you're not writing a separate check for it, that is the cost of sale. So for example, if we have, if we have a transaction coordinator that gets paid when the transaction closes and the deal falls through, we don't pay them, right? As long as you don't have to pay, as long as you don't have to pay them, it's a cost of sale. Right. Now, if we had a transaction coordinator on our team that we just paid a salary to, that would not be a cost of sale then, correct? That's correct. That's an, that's an expense under salaries. Okay. So that's an expense. So you said the first number to look at was cost of sales. What would be that second number then to look at? Just your general expenses, your fixed expenses that you have every single month. Perfect. And, and for those that, that struggle, I mean, P&Ls can, let's just be very honest accountability to your numbers to kind of knowing your your money and where it is is scary for a lot of people right it's i mean when you first just kind of step into it i mean i remember that i remember the first time that i came to you and this was about a couple of weeks ago and i was like hey dennis so i got some investments going on man right and you were in, <laughs> and i was like my disney stock is up right and you're like how many shares do you have bill and i'm like two right and so and you were just like Okay, way to start. And but yet that's the thing. We got to start somewhere, right? We yeah. start somewhere and then we start to build on all those things. So, um with that, I mean, and with 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 that scariness of getting into accountability and that we do have to start somewhere. And so where where do you think people should start when it comes to their money and the, the numbers of money? I think they should hire it out. I really? do because if they would have done it if they could do it themselves, they would have already done it. Okay. So hire it out. It's not that expensive. Um, you can probably find somebody in the hundred to one hundred fifty dollar a month range that would take care of your books for you. Okay. And and print you out a and L a month. Okay. So we want to see them like really and truly kind of run our numbers. Give us a P and L at the end of the month. And if anybody ever needed to check their P and L, where could they go? I mean, obviously they have their outside help. Is there any inside help for somebody to check their P and L? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, I've been open to do that for anybody that, that wants to do it. Yeah, I mean, so if, if because anybody, you, here's what I find, Bill. What I'm finding is that people who do their P and L are also in the top twenty percent. It's amazing, isn't so it? So isn't that interesting? I don't yeah. know which came first, top twenty or the P and L. Yeah, it's it it is interesting, right? I mean, that's the that's the great question. Um, if you find yourself in the top twenty percent and don't have a P and L, you are. It seems like you're running and working even harder than what you should be because you're just you don't know where, you don't know where the finish line is, right? Yeah, you can't see that goal. So, and when we when we look at numbers, there's also numbers besides budgeting in that, right? Yeah. You have been in this business for many years now, right? Yep. You're, you're doing it. I'm not calling you, you know, mature or anything. I'm just saying, you know, you've been in this business for a while. What numbers, as an agent, what numbers do we look at to kind of find the trends and the things going on in business that we know how whether our business is seasonal or it's steady, what do, what do we look at there? Well, you would look at your own personal, um, mo make, uh, what's it called, multi-year trend. Okay. If you've been with the company for a year or more, you're gonna have a multi-year trend sheet and it's gonna show you every month what you did last year. It'll break it down into listings taken, listings sold, volume sold, uh, volume taken, closed sales, uh, written units, it'll have every, all of it. So it's okay. a pretty powerful tool that you can compare from last year to this year. Yeah. Very or cool. any year. Really. And, and it shows, and we know that really, truly kind of year after year until we start to, to make growth plans, we see trends year after year, right? Yes. And our numbers will tell us that. And, and by looking at those numbers, even as a business, we run this as a market center. You know, you as the OP of, of Federway, Pam is the OP of, of Mountain the Sound. And we we sit back though as a staff and we kind of look at our business as a market center and we're just like agents the market centers are just like agents and we, so we send and we look at our trends and so we know how to set aside different funds and different monies 
depending on what our multi-year trends are, to prepare for the, the coming year, right? Yeah. So a yeah. long time ago, a long time ago, we realized that the winter months were always lower in, in just typical sales, right? So you'd have yeah. less sales during those uh, October, November, December, January, February, and March. Those six months out of the year were always less than the spring and summer markets. Um, but we've, we've fixed that probably six or seven years ago. We started stacking people into those winter months, like double the amount of cappers in those, in those winter months so that we'd have a more even cash flow all the way through the year. There so I can tell you right now, out of the last four years, at least 25% of our income comes in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So that's where it should be. It should be at least 25% because that means you're hitting exactly the same you would have in the summer months. Exactly. And, and the interesting thing is, is agents can do the same thing in their business. That's right. So what would they, instead of agents, what would they have? They'd have well, listings. They'd, they'd stack have listings. their listings in those months. They'd work harder in those, in those fall months to start stacking up the listings for the winter months. Exactly. Right. And, and we call that, if anybody's been through bold before or, you know, in maps coaching, the energy wheel, right? And we know how much energy we need to be pouring in. It's interesting in the summertime, a lot of agents shut down, you know, in November, December, because the holidays are coming up. And yet that should be some of the hardest working times for us really, truly to be pushing to get those listings and get those appointments. Yeah. That's where the highest energy should be coming from, right? Yes. Um, I'm going to give you some reality right now about yeah. when people talk about their, I made a hundred thousand. Well, they grossed a hundred thousand. Yeah. Right. Yep. So if somebody really wants to make six figures, which they all say, I want to be in the six figure, you know, income, uh, bracket. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. So the, the real number that you want to hit for gross is 180,000 to net a okay. hundred thousand and not a hundred thousand. Right. And not a hundred. That's right. Right. Yeah. Because it's like, Oh, I made a hundred thousand dollars. But if we really said, Hey, I made a hundred thousand dollars. That means that we did, we made 180,000, we had taxes, we had cost of sale and we had expenses come out of that. That's right. And that's how we make 100,000. Really that's right. make 100,000, right? Now, how do people go- By the way, before we go any further, let's think about that for a minute. Sounds like a lot of money, but on a $10,000 commission, that means you did 18 units. Yep. Is that doable? Well, I, I, yes, it is. It's very doable. Very it, doable. It's doable for a single agent, right? Working single by single agent with no, with no, um, nobody helping them. Yeah. They can yeah. do that. So, and that's, you know, we look at those numbers. People are all, that's another thing that we look at when it comes to numbers is, well, when's the right time to hire somebody, right? I would tell anybody from coming from, you know, a, a, a staff or a leadership position, I would tell anybody, get the transaction coordinator, right? It's going to cost you $300, $400 to have somebody take care of all the paperwork. But to get that 80% off of, you know, what you do, because that 20% is focusing on getting those listings, right? And the listings as long, are reasonable. Oh, as long as that's what they're doing, as long as they're giving it away, but then using that time they would have spent to generate more, in, more income. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. And so the other thing that we can do a lot of times with numbers is look at what the market is doing, Right. And we have different outsourcing that we use. You and I will sit back and we'll run numbers. I mean, we get geeked out looking at, at things. Uh, in fact, I'll share my screen here real quick. Um, and I did not prepare Dennis for this, but I'm going to do this anyways. Um, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to take it up to, and I apologize as I'm moving this around, but this is something that we call Alan Pope, right? This is at alanpope.com. And we can look at numbers and stuff. And as we look at these numbers right here, we start to see an interesting trend, right? This is, um, as we see it, listings, net pending sales versus inventory, right? Our blue line is inventory. Our red line is net, or net pending sales. We look at this all the time and we analyze kind of what the months have done. But even in these numbers, we start to see trends. What do these numbers really tell us though about what the market is doing, Dennis? If you look at this year, just 2020, yeah, notice that the, the red line is above the blue line in every month, except for it looks like maybe March or April or something. Maybe it's uh, like, January, February, March, April. April, they're down. Yeah. April. So that means we're out selling the listings that are coming on board. Okay. It means right. more, more going pending. And this is what the entire, this is King County. So this is this King, is County, yeah. King County. Yeah. 
This is just an example of some things that we look at, but these numbers are available to agents as well. Yes. They can be getting on and they can be seeing exactly what's going on so that when clients are out asking them what the market is doing, here's a great example of what the market is doing. We can also scroll down. We can look at, at that absorption rate. And this is one that you talked about. Just, you just mentioned it. We're at one, 116% absorption in, of inventory. In other words, more things are selling than are coming on the market at all times, right? Right now is what we see. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, and here's why we keep harping on people to get good at getting listings. Because if you can get listings in this market right now, it, your job gets so much easier. It does. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And those are some of the numbers that we look at, you know, on a constant basis, right? Um, hey, Bill. Yeah. Yes, did Cole. You show, did you show absorption rate on that one? That was the absorption rate there, yes. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, 116. Yeah, we're at 116. In other words, and another way to think about that is for every listing that is out there right now, you have 1.16 buyers going for that listing, right? So in other words, this is multiple offer time right now, guys. I think it's actually higher than that because only one person can buy it, right? How many offers did they get? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, it, that's the, the, buyer, the buyer's agents know right now that it's tough because they're going to have to, you know, probably write five or six deals to get one to stick. Yep. Well, and that's the thing when you know your numbers and you know numbers like this, right? You focus your, your education, you focus your training, everything that you do on how do I get listings? Because when I get listings, I control the market. If we saw it the other way around, right? That that blue line was way above that red line. Then we know, okay, now our focus, our education, our training, man, I want to be taking the classes that have to do with how do I be the best buyer's agent right now? But this is why we tell everybody really, truly balance your, balance your business out with listings and with buyers. And a lot of agents still don't even know what that, that number looks like, right? The way to find those numbers is, as you said, Dennis, is in the multi-year trends. How do you get to your multi-year trends? That's right. MyKW.KW.com. You go there, under your profile picture, it's gonna have a report button. You hit that report button, and it's right there, multi, you go down to multi-year trends and see what your multi-year trends are. But you'll know exactly what you do, how many listings you wrote, how many buyers you, you wrote. Um, it's all right there for you. We just need to start to understand our numbers and what they really mean. So, yeah. any, anything else that, we should, that I didn't ask you, Dennis, that you think are important about numbers? Well, I mean, numbers are the language of business. If you don't know what your numbers are, you really don't have a business. You might yeah. have a nice sales job, a nice sales career going. You might be able to stay ahead of the IRS. You might be able to stay ahead of your bills. But why wouldn't you turn that into a, an actual business? Because, I mean, at some point, you're going to want to step out of the business, right? Yeah. And if you have something that's actually traceable and, and you, can, you can watch what has happened over the years, someone else would be willing to buy that business. Yeah. You usually at a multiple of what you make. So for instance, if you made, if you guaranteed 200,000 a year, you netted 200,000 a year, how much do you think you could sell that for? Yeah. Probably yeah. 800,000. At least. Right. I mean, and that's, that's the incredible thing. I mean, it really is when you get into this and you start to kind of geek out a little bit on numbers, it's, and I remember Dennis made fun of me, right? Because I'm a high eye. And, and the first time he asked me to do numbers, he was like, man, I didn't, and I turned in the numbers, right? Because I love numbers. He's like, man, I thought this was going to be tough for you. And I'm like, no, because this is a language all in its own that tells me what everything else is doing. So when I get a chance, really, truly, I do. I run up to Dennis's office and I'm like, help, help me understand um, these, these, you know, these numbers and what they really are truly saying. And so I absolutely love that. So I had Carmen pass me um, uh, a note here. It says Dennis's calendar should be filled up with P&L appointments. So... Um, <laughs> Dennis loves it when, they, when his calendar is filled. And those agents that are on this call, listen, I would highly encourage you to sit down with Dennis, go over your P&L. He loves doing it. And the education that you will get from that is you can't, you can't make enough. I mean, back. It is the return of investment of your time, 30 minutes to an hour with Dennis is absolutely incredible. And it's just what numbers did. Dennis has got a great story about what numbers did for his life, for him and Pam's, right? and where, where they were to where they are now, but it all started with them understanding their numbers 
And then when they understood the numbers, then they took the action plan to put things into place and look at where they're at today. So Dennis, thank you for your time, man. So You're welcome. I just want to say too, Bill, if um, if you don't have a PL, I do have some referrals for people that can, you know, put put yours together for you. Perfect. And can people just reach out to you to get yep. those? Awesome. Dennis, thanks again, man. Thanks for everything that welcome. you do. Congratulations on the new grandson. Your family is amazing. So uh, Cole, we'll turn it back over to you. Everyone else, have a great day. Fantastic. Hey guys, I got to tell you, so exciting. So Dennis is going to be doing a deep, deep, deep dive class in September into numbers, which is great. N numbers are the language of real estate and understanding those are so important. And that will tee us up to do business planning clinic at the beginning of October. Okay. Lots of good information today. Here's the thing. Keep moving forward. Ask questions, get to know your data, reach out to Dennis. Um, all of us here are here to help you and we are a resource. So I wanna thank so much Jennifer Thompson, I wanted to thank Lindsay Dwyer, thank you Jackie Parker, Dennis Ranch and Bill Allison, and of course John Hansen for a really fantastic meeting today. Everybody stay uh, safe, stay healthy and stay active. We'll see you again, bye-bye.